Welcome back. This is the beginning of the 2020 season. Uh, so today we're not going to, I'm going to talk, this is going to be a technique thing. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to build a hot spot, but it's also going to be about density of the heads because there's a lot of, I see a lot of really cool, we were just looking at some of Pat Cohen's flies that are just totally decorative, right? And they're just, and the guy's a freak show. He's so good at frightening. But you'll see a lot of this when, when we're working with deer hair, especially with deer hair, is that there's a little confusion, you know, how much to put on, how much not to put on, what are you trying to do? So what I'm going to go over, I'm going to use this, I'm just going to do, I already, for the, for the talk too much haters, we, we, we finished the fly off here to this point so we could get it done faster. But, and this is, we've done, we've done woolly skull or woolly sculpins before, so you can see those. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fly and I'm going to show you how to do these kind of decorative hot spots, not, not really packed, really tight, because I want to go through this whole decorative thing as, uh, as opposed to just density and what you're trying to achieve, because what we're trying to achieve with this is a, a basic silhouette but where you can get messed up and you'll see this frequently on your commercial flies which this is a commercial fly it's a real well tied fly but what you'll see frequently is these heads will be super tight right and when so when you see somebody that's doing something like Cohen or Andres you know any of these guys that do this really decorative stuff they're they're packing the hair super tight right and you pack it and you pack it and you pack it and then you then you trim it out because you're trying to get these really tight lines, but that's not necessarily, it's beautiful, but it's not necessarily functional in the working fly because what I'm trying to achieve with these, and I was just, I was just whipping up some of these woolly sculpins, which uh, this summer I heard a lot of this, that, you know, that, that I must say that this is my favorite fly all the time because a lot of people told me that, <laughs> but I have favorites and for certain applications. And so the woolly sculpin, in the single hook world, whenever one of the J boys, Johnny or Jeremy's kicking my ass or, and things are tough, I tend to go back to the real basics like, uh, not that that's ever happened, but I just say that in case maybe someday it does. But in that, in the event of that, my, my kind of go-to, if things, you know, not, not really just coming together how they should be, I tend to get real basic, and so the woolly sculpin, and in particular the bigger woolly sculpins, are and uh, and just go to. It's just like you know I'm I'm struggling, and I go back to basics, and I go to these things, and I I'm just that's what I was tying up, uh, and, and started making me think about it, and so I was going through these flies, in the in the particular in particular this one because this is Johnny and I were over on the big hole the other day and. It, we were we were struggling. It wasn't really going really well, and and towards the end of the day, uh, we kind of went back to this you know woolly sculpin, just a basic one hook, nothing to it fly, and pretty much it lit up, you know, and so uh, that's why I wanted to, I was tying them up, and it started making me think about it, and sometimes this whole hot spot thing and this kind of stuff here, where you're just putting a little style to it, I mean maybe you're just it really has no function. It's not like it's going to make the fish just tear it up. Most of the fish is going to see it from the bottom anyway. And that's what this bottom, why it's white. Because whenever you look at your fish, you know, I always talk about how they, they're, they're all ambushers and they're looking up, right? And so I like to put something light reflective in the bell, in the, up by the head because all your sculpin have a really light belly and a, uh, especially up by their head where they're broader. It's, it's really distinctive and you can see that changes right there when uh, you look at the bottom but it's kind of I mean after a while you tie enough maybe you just want to style the damn thing up maybe you don't care about anything else and I just want to make it uh, show you a way to do this to make it really easy to do and yet functional so we can see how much hair I like on mine I have another fly here this is kind of a this is a different style of fly here this is a, it's not, it's kind of a jig fly, but it was kind of originally designed so I could drag it on the bottom and just run it like this. And I have almost no hair on the bottom when you, I showed it from there. When you look at this thing, it's designed to ride kind of like that, right? 
do, 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 do against the bottom. And so it would be counterintuitive for me to put much hair down here because that would make it buoyant. So I have almost no hair on the bottom. I have some on the top for the, the, the collar and the, and the head, but it's really the point I'm trying to get at is you, you need to use your hair to make the fly do something. And if you overpack them, what you're going to see is you'll frequently see a fly that has trouble righting itself because you, it you want it to swim like that. I mean, it's a sculpin. They don't flop sideways all the time. And so that's why we're trying to figure out how much hair to put on here. Personally, and I'll get to that when I start tying it, I like a fly, and you can see it doesn't take much. I don't know if you can see much on that, but when I push it, and I always, whenever I do a demo, I send these out, and then you can feel that it's not really tight. It's squishy. You can still see the distinction between the, the lines in there, but it's not so tight that, you know, it looks like you painted it on, but you can feel it. It's not real dense. It's just kind of, you know, you can see the hairs moving in here like that. It's not, it's, it's not supposed to be just tight because that would make it float. So now your fly is going to float like this with its head up. So I'm trying to make this thing so it's a little bit, it's a little bit, squishy but yet it's filling the footprint because all we're trying to do here is we're trying to make a silhouette of the head you know broad silhouette we're not trying to make it floaty so we got to have the water get in between the hairs and that's what you know lets it go underwater so on to this actually spinning this head and so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to do a two-tone on this and again a lot of this is just I mean, you tie the same damn fly over and over and over, you get crazy. And a lot of this maybe is just for style, for fun. Just give, give the thing a little bit of soul, right? It's just for fun. And so it really, from a functional standpoint, it's not that big of a deal. But from, you're just bored, you want to change it up, you just want to make it look cool. You know, it'll, it's not going to fish much different, but it'll look better in the box when I look at it. That's Johnny. Johnny doesn't do that. Johnny has no soul, you know what I mean? I, I know a lot of people were writing in that they, they were tired this year of not hearing Johnny get picked on, so we'll give him some shots. That was for Jason mostly. So I've got this. One of the things through the summer, I, we don't shoot during the summer very much, and one of the things that I heard a lot this year was uh, that people would write in on the video. They'd watch the videos and write in, and one of the most common things that people have is that when they – their heads are spinning, their collar spins, their head spins after they're done with it, right? So the first thing you can see here, I don't have a lot of stuff on the hook, but I want, if you're running, I'm running GPS 100 right here and with the right bobbin like I always do. But if you wax this thread right when you start, you don't have to wax the whole thing, just enough so that and you get two or three turns. This is the beginning, right? You have to have this anchored really tight. If you have a bunch of crap up here on your hook, and you don't have you don't have to be clean. You can have some materials underneath there. But when you pull on this thing, nothing better happen. It, it can't twist around. You have to have a good foundation of this stuff or it's going to spin. And then the next thing is going to be just how you apply your materials. So I'm going to take, on this particular one, I'm going to do a two-tone head, and I'm going to do a, a darker collar. So I'm going to take a pretty good amount of hair here because I like thick collars. Again, when you look at these things, the collar has a function, right? It's the, the fly is designed to be a, it's designed to be a sculpin, which has got a broad head and really broad, fat pectoral fins. And so obviously we're trying to do that just a little bit. We're trying to mimic that just a little bit. But the other thing we're trying to do is we're trying to stabilize that fly. So the bigger uh, collar on there keeps that fly level and it doesn't want to spin over on its side. So like always you clean this hair out and there's we've, we've got a lot of tutorials out there on uh, spinning hair and different things we've done in the past so you can look a lot of those up. But I'm going to take a pretty good amount of hair here and if you have to and if, it, if, you, if it's fighting you do not be afraid to do these twice, to do, go right over top. Maybe I'll do a second one right over top. So but, you know, one of the things about fly tying, take your time and get it right. Nobody practices this. Stuff. It wouldn't hurt you not to have this fly at all, just to tie these heads up. And 
and just figure out how to do it. And if and this is a real common thing that bothers people is getting enough hair in a collar and getting it so it doesn't spin. So you can see how much I have here. It's not it's pretty good gob. I, I don't like that pencil thing, but it's about a, it's about two pencils, I suppose. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to put the the pencil thing. By the way, is a is a terminology when you talk to people talk about tie and they say it's about a pencil with the round. Well, it depends on if you're squeezing it. I mean, it looks more than that there, but, uh, and I never really knew what it meant anyway, so I'm thinking this is about a pencil and a half or two. I'm going to put this up like always. You always use your hook as your gauge. You know, you have to have something as a ruler. You don't get to measure everything. If you use your hook, you can measure it off the hook and you'll have a lot of consistency. And the consistency is the hallmark of great tires. If you if your collars are always the same length and your heads are the same shapes, you've mastered your craft and that it, it shows in the end product and your flies will swim better. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it about a third of the hook, overall hook. I'm going to transfer this. I'm going to cut it in one nice clean cut, just like that. I'm going to take this and we're going to spin this bobbin to the right. And the reason you do that, it's twofold. One, it tightens your thread so it's spun in up and it's more of cord like it's more round and the other thing is it'll lean back if I if I spin it it'll lean back over like this I'm not doing anything it's just the the spin is making it go backwards so now I'm going to set this collar right on top and you can see how much I'm going to grab here I'm going to grab about a sixteenth of an inch right there you can see it's nice and tight and I'm not I'm not letting go of my thumb and my forefinger I've got this and I'm pulling and you can see I'm starting to get a nice little sunburst head. This is how you do an elk hair caddis too. And so I'm pulling down like this. And when that thread's pretty well disappeared, go back right through the same thing. Pull nice and tight. I push down on the top of it. That one, I know it went around just because you, you get used to feeling how that it went around. It's nice and tight. I don't loosen up. Go right through those hairs just like that. Three turns push it down, and now I've got a nice broad head, get this little bit of hackle out of here, and when you look from the bottom, you can see that the hair's only gone halfway around the hook, right? There's no, there's no hair all the way around. We held that with our thumb and our forefinger, I held the hair in when I pulled it, and I went like that, I pulled straight down, it wrapped, it, it went around the top half of the hook, and there I've got that little tiny sunbeam. You can go right through that. If you think it's not tight, I like, to, I like to go progressively forward. I don't like to keep going backwards. That's when you start building bulk. That's when that head. And, and by the way, on the spin thing, if your heads are doing this, more turns do not make your fly tighter. It's just, it's, you, you do it with a, a specified number of turns. I like to have about five. I do two, I do one, two. I pull that tight. I usually go one, two, three, right through the, just a, Go through those hairs, and I'm done. And then when you're up in the front of it right here, you should be able to pull this thing forever. I could break this hook, and nothing's going to spin because I didn't. One of the most common errors when you watch people, what I didn't do is you watch people, they'll go like that, and then they go. And for some reason, they just whip two more right on top of it. That's just making bulk. It's not making that thing squeeze around that hook. All right? So we beat that dog enough. So here we go. We're going to go in here, we're going to make a two-tone. As I told you earlier, I like to see a white belly on these things, right? I like to see, not belly, a uh, head. And so I like to see this, and I do it on the darker ones too, the green ones. I, I put that on all of them, really, on, on this style. And this cactus wool is what this one is. And it's, I like, it's kind of a hot spot, kind of a trigger point, trying to have a spot where the fish is going to go in and, you know, crush them. So... This is a really good place um, when you're going to do this style of uh, head. This is, if you've got some marginal hair, because we're going to spin this, as long as it's coarse and it it's still feels kind of dry and coarse, it'll, it'll spin. But this one's particularly piece, uh, it's a piece of bleach and it's really not very good hair. It's not good, if I wasn't doing what I'm about to do, it's not good hair. It doesn't have, like, this is really nice hair. And, Again, we've got tutorials on that, um, on how to pick it. But it's got a nice break in the hair up here, the dark and the, and the light. Excuse me. 
the dark and the light. This one's kind of marginal. It's bleached its belly. It's supposed to all be this color. And this piece wasn't really much good for anything, so I couldn't sell it because it's two-tone. But it's perfect for what I like for these. It's got that, it's not stark white and it's not really brown. It's just kind of that tanny, you know, color. And it, it's perfect for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, it's pretty long. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut a piece of it. And this is where it this is where you really have to start to practice. If, if, and I, I, I harp about this constantly. No one practices fly tying. Everybody fly ties, they do the same thing. They tie the fly, they get to the part that they don't like, and then they panic because they don't ever practice that. And then they do the same stuff over and over, and the heads don't, you know, whatever it is. Might be a wing set, might be a head, might be anything. But it really behooves you to go in without tying your fly and just practice doing this until you get it down. That way you won't panic when you get right here. And so part of that practice is knowing how much hair to use to get the effect that you want. So if you, if you don't practice it, you get there and you're kind of like, eh, crap, was it this much, was it that much? And it just, it just gets harder to do. So I already cleaned that. This is good hair, it didn't have much junk in it. So again, I took about the same amount, about a pencil and a half. And remember, I'm not gonna pack this really hard. And so that's where you, this practice and figuring out which you like, which you don't, you know, maybe you want them even thinner. I mean, I've seen a lot of flies that are just, you, there's hardly any hair on them. They fish just fine. They sink a little faster if that's what you're after. But it's just, you just gotta figure out what you like to, what you like to see. So I'm going to take this hair, I want to be basically right in the middle of this hair. I have the finer points to the left. We're going to trim some of this, so the tips to my left. I'm going to come in here, not real well, and I'm right in front of that hair, right? If you think that you're, if you think that you're not really tight right here, give yourself a little bit of wax and, and lock that in. You can see where I'm at right now. And so, because this hair is going to spin, it's going to lay like my, just look at the tips of my scissors here. It's going to lay up against my collar like that. And so the thinner hair is going to lay against the collar. I'm going to come in here, messed around a little bit, got loose. Just, if, you, if you're probably not going to sit and talk to a camera by yourself, but if you do, uh, get used to bundling this so it's in a nice round bundle. So when you get ready to work with it, there it is. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do one. And what I'm doing right now is you can see the thread is going, it's starting to disappear. It's going into the bundle. I'm letting it work around the hook. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hold it on top like I did with my collar. I'm letting it work around the hook. And I take the second one and I let it work around the hook. You don't have to, you can see, I'm just, I'm trying to get it to go. So it starts on top of the hook and I want the bundle to be right, right in the middle when I start to spin. Now, you can, if you're not used to it, you can do another half turn over the top if you want, and then pull straight down, and you saw it roll once. That The hair should all go around one time. It shouldn't go around one and a half. It should go around one time. And when you pull on this thing, I mean, you can see how hard I'm pulling on it. It's totally locked. The thread went all the way around. The hair went around once. I had two turns. I'm left with a turn. I had, I had two and a half. I'm left with a turn and a half of thread. The back of it's the turn. So if I come back up right there, it would be another turn. So you can see now I'm nice and loose. I've got, I'll show you how much I've got left here. I've got a little bit here. I'm going to push this just, just slightly when I, after I do it. I don't like to do that until I put the next step in here. And so I'm going to do a, a pretty big one. I'm going to have a little bit left. I'm going to do another one and we'll be done with it. And you can see if, if I wasn't talking, this would go really quick. So you, it's not much slower to do this when we're going to put these spots in here than it is if you were just going to spin the head. Now here's where, this is where you separate where you've got to practice a little bit. Because now we've got, it, only if you want consistency in these heads. If you want it to be about the same each time that you do one of these things, I want that much, I want, I'm going to do a little bit more in the back and a little bit less in the front. And so I'm going to look at this and go, okay, maybe that's a little bit much. That's where you have to practice. 
And so I'm not looking, this is again, this is a decoration. It's just giving the fly a little bit of soul. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clean that out. And I'm going to take about a third of what I had before. And I'm going to put this right on top. I'm going to clean that up. So I've got a, you can see I've got, you know, I don't know, about a popsicle width piece of this. And I've got two turns of thread. And now, if I hadn't played with that, I could still see. I could see right there, there's my thread, all right? And so I'm going to come up here. You're trying to go through the exact same spot right there. And I'm going to put this hair right on top. And try not to, I just caught one I didn't like. Try not to catch too much. You can see it's nice and even. Look over the top of it. And the more time you take to just figure that out right there. I don't like that's a little bit forward. But now I'm going to go right here and I'm going to pull straight down. I'm not going to let this spin. I'm not doing any more turns. This is it. I'm doing one turn, not turn. One. I got one pull through and I'm pulling straight down. Right? Look over top of it. See if it's kind of where you want it. Then just slowly work your way. Just take a little bit of time and work your way through. What I'm trying not to do, I'm, not, I'm trying not to catch, I'll show you from this side, I'm trying not to catch hairs like that. So I worked my way through the hair. Just, just slow, just work through it. Now I'm going to come up here, and I'm now I'm going to tighten that down right here. So it's tightening up. Don't trap your hairs. And I'm going to push it just a little bit. And I want to see that I have white hairs in front just a little bit. Now I'm going to take another white one. I'm going to take a third of what I did the last time, roughly. I'm going to take a third for this one. Come in here. I'm not. This one's not going to take much. And again, I'm not trying to get dense. I'm trying to get... I mean, this is just to build a profile, so I don't need a lot of hair. Come in here from the side. One, two, and I spin it. And you kind of, you just get a look at it and say, yeah, that's enough hair. Now I'm going to take a third of what I did before on the top here. And if... If this thing, right, at this point, we're going to try, we're going to come in here. I want to make sure I got a line right there. If I think that I don't have enough hair, I can still go, I'll do it. I'll, I'll just go through and do it again. So I'm going to go right through. I've got, there's my spin. I'm going to find that middle. I'm going to just trap some hair right there. I'm going to come in on this one. Boom. Do another spot. And then we could get away with this right here. But I want to, I'm just going to show you how little you can, there's my second pull, I'm pulling really tight on that. Come in here, and you could do a tiny little spin if you, I would never do this on this fly. I, I would just, but it's, I just want to show you what you can do here. If you want a little bit more white in the front, you can push it. I don't like pushing this back. I'm hardly, you can see I'm not, it's, it's not really. But you could come in here and do a second spin right there. Boom, and you'd have, only if you want, I mean, if you just, it's however you ever like to look, whatever you like to look at. It, it could have, I could have used a little bit more hair underneath that on the first one. So, come in here, whip that out, there. So, now we've got this bunch of hairs on top here. Take a blade. So, what you're going to see is this isn't really tight. If you were doing a decorative fly here, this would have, you'd be just, you would use a packer, you would you'd, you'd smash this hair in. But you can see when I touch it, it's just, it's pretty soft, right? It's not going to, I don't have any density built into this thing. So now I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to bend the blade. Excuse me, first I do the bottom. I'm going to hold the blade at a 45 and I'm going to draw it at me. And so we kind of have to tie sideways so that this back camera can see. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all the hairs and nothing's trapped anywhere. Take this blade and I draw it at a 45. 
Somebody's going to write me tomorrow and ask me if I like the blade benders and the holders. I don't. I don't like them. I don't like reaching. It, it doesn't mean they're not good. It, doesn't, it just means I don't care for it. I've been doing it like this for about 40 years. And so when I get the blade holders, when I go like this to push in it, I can't draw at a 45. I can't. I don't like working so far away. It's just me personally. I've watched a lot of people use them, and they're great with them. I, I'm just don't like it. So I'm going to come in here and I always stabilize my right hand on my left hand fingers right here and I hold my hand against the vise just so I'm not wiggling around, right? And so I'm coming here and then I just come at it at a 45 and just kind of get a couple turn, couple pulls, just get it flat, right? Boom. So then look at it, take a peek so you can see from the bottom it's nice and flat. And we can come in here in a minute, and we can do everything, get everything trimmed up where it wants. At first, I just do that. Then I'm going to take the blade, and I'm going to bend it. I'm going to look around, make sure there's... I prefer to have a few kind of hanging down to the side. You know, if it was something really decorative, you'd want them to have nice, clean breaks. I kind of like to have a few here and there, just speckles, you know. But this one's not going to have it, but... I like to have them kind of mixed in a little bit. So I'm going to bend this blade. Nobody can tell you how much to bend it. I'm going to come in here. Nobody can tell you because I don't know how how you like to move your hand. If you know, if I could say I could bend it around a quarter, I don't know. And everyone's different. Every fly is different. So you just kind of got to get, you know, whatever you're used to, whatever you get used to. This blade's a little dull because I trimmed all those other ones with it. So you usually get about six flies to a blade. This one's getting a little bit. I'm having to push on it a little more than I want. Can't find the sharp side. So the the more I push, the more the, the the further I go down, the tighter that hair gets, and it'll be easier to. When you pack a head, it cuts. I mean, it cuts easy because it's it's not folding. It's too much pressure against all the other hairs. And so what I do first is I take the blade, I cut the bottom, then I cut this, then I cup it like that, and then I get my rough shape like this. At that point, I'm going to pull this out of the vise. Is that about right there, Jeremy? Yes, sir. And so now what I do is I come in from the back. I always look over top of my fly. I'm, I'm going to lean over a little bit and so the back camera can see it. But I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to look right over top of it and what I do is I come in I grab the I lean the scissors against the collar so I don't clip my collar off do it on the other side and I just kind of come over it like this and I, I cut a rough shape to my fly and I look all I'm doing is looking straight over top of it and then I come over like this and I just hit the tip of the nose there and just round it out a little bit so now I'm pretty rough it's it's not, you know, it's still hairs all over, but I've got, what I've got is I've got a working template. And so I can see the shape, I can see where things are, and then I come back in here, grab my blade, and I just finish cutting it up. I just come in here, and I'll go in, and you'll find that when the hairs aren't loose like that, it's pretty hard to get them. When they're really long like that, there's only a couple of them, it's hard to get them with the, with the blade, because they just, they, they fold back. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to push against the collar. You can actually, because the hair's pretty much at a 45, you can bump your blade right against your collar. You'll get used to that and you won't cut your collar. Maybe and you're going to cut a few here and there, but not too much. So now I've got this cute little dot on here. I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to try not to get too many of my hackles. I've got a hackle in there and push against your collar, and I just want a nice square bottom cut underneath there. And then I pull it out to the side, and you sit here and play with this, and you keep cutting and cutting and cutting and until you get where you like the shape of it. Bingo. So, we're going to quit that just because we could sit here and trim that thing for an hour, but you can see what we're looking for. Uh, Every time I say I'm going to quit that, I know you're going to look at this fly and go, oh, he missed one there, he missed one there. So I really don't care.
So that's what we were looking at. So we've got this little decorative hot spot. And you can see, you can see in the, I'm thinking you'll be able to see how easy it is for me to touch that and move that hair. That's the density part I'm talking about. It's not really dense in the packing respect. It's not really tight. It's loose so that it'll let the water go in between the hairs. And that way it's not being, when you pack them really tight, they become a popper head. When you do this, all you're doing is you're getting that nice broad silhouette. You can go in there and you'll see that you get the two-tone from the bottom. You can see the really nice white. Flip it over. You just got this little decorative spot on the top. It's more for fun than it is anything. Actually, it's the only thing it's for. Uh, just gives it a little bit of style so you're not so bored doing the same thing one after another. And yet it really doesn't. Once you practice a little bit, you can do it almost as fast as you can do it just spinning the heads up. It's a really, this particular fly, uh, I do in two, and again, I say it all the time, but in, in certain situations when things, I'm, I'm going to, it doesn't have to be because I'm getting my butt kicked. I frequently start with these flies, but uh, the single hook flies, the woolly sculpt, and it's, and by the way, this, this is closer. This isn't, this wasn't my fly origin. This, this kind of version was, but this was Ed Shank's fly. I stole it from him unintentionally back about 20 years ago, but Ed Shank had this uh, way back when in the seventies and his had a, and mine never did. This was how mine was. He puts a, he puts a marabou, he doesn't put hackle, uh, and he puts a marabou wing over top of it. And this one's, that's kind of more Ed Shank original style. And I started doing that after I saw that uh, his fly, his original fly, and on, I, I do it on about half of them now. And I really think it helps the fly. Uh, and his head shape, this is Ed Shank's head shape. I copied that my whole life, had no idea that I stole his style, but his shapes, but it's that broad kind of squarish style head like that. Before that, any ones I'd ever seen before that were kind of roundish and this is just a far better looking fly in my opinion. So that's the first one of the year. I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you out.